In this video, we're going over how to use the Moto G Pure for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the Moto G Pure for beginners. Uh, this is a full beginner's walkthrough. I'm gonna go over everything from how to navigate the phone, how to answer calls, how to download applications, how to set up your email. We're gonna to try to touch on every single thing a new person would need to know. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing we're gonna go over and what we always like to go over is just the button layout of the phone. Now there are no buttons on the left side of the phone here, but on the right side of the phone, you'll find the volume up button, the volume down, and the power sleep button. Now, when you tap the button, the screen will go dark. This puts the phone to sleep. And when you tap it again, it wakes up the phone. So one important thing to note again, tap that button to put the phone to sleep, but this is not turning it off. It's just putting it to sleep in the sleep mode. Tap it again to wake up the phone. And then when you want to unlock the phone, you put your finger on the screen and just drag it up and that will unlock the phone for you. Now at the top of the phone, you will find the headphone jack. So if you have a uh, old set of headphones, it will work on this phone. And at the bottom of the phone, you will find the charging port for the phone. And this phone does use a type C charging type, type C. So if you ever need to purchase a replacement charger, you'll need to ask for a type C charger. Okay, now before we get into using the actual phone here, I wanna go over uh, just one more thing with the buttons. If you need to change the sound, for example, putting it on vibrate or uh, on silent, you just need to tap either the volume up or volume down one time. It'll bring up this menu and you'll need to tap on this icon. It's gonna go away real fast, so I'm gonna tap it again. Um, but either, again, volume up or volume down, when you tap it, this button comes up and when you tap that button, this puts it on silent, tap it again. If you see the bell, it means the sound is on. And then if you tap it and see the little vibration icon on the side, that means that it's on vibrate. So this is how you toggle through sound, vibrate or no sound. And then this is your volume control here. So if you're playing music and you're trying to raise or lower the volume, it's all gonna happen here. If you tap on the music icon, it automatically just turns the music all the way down. So that's how you control the sound. One last thing, if you tap underneath the sound icon, there's another button that takes you to your sound settings. And the reason I'm showing you this specifically is I know people have challenges with their uh, ringer volume being low. So here you can control all the sound settings on the phone. So your media volume, that's if you're playing a video. The call volume, which is how loud the speaker on, how loud the call is gonna come through the phone. And then you have ringer volume. Ringer volume is how loud the phone is gonna ring. So you can play around with these volume levels depending on if you need the ringer to be very loud or if you don't want it to be very loud. All those controls are gonna happen in this section right here. Okay, so now that we are in the phone, I'm gonna walk you through how to navigate the screen. Where is everything? What do you need to know to use the phone, the basics? Now, before I start, there's one settings tweak we're gonna to need to make to make the phone easier for you to operate. So you wanna swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, and tap on the settings wheel right here. This will take us to our settings menu. And um, this is what you'll normally see when you first go to settings. You'll need to swipe all the way up and go to system and then gestures and then system navigation, and you'll wanna to switch to three button navigation. This is going to change the settings to make it a bit easier for a newer person to use the phone. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen here, now we have three buttons, a back button, a home button, and a recent apps button. And these are gonna be the three main buttons you'll use 
to navigate the phone. So let's jump into what these buttons do exactly. So first, the home button always takes you back to this screen, which is called the home screen. So if I were to go into one of these little icons, which are called apps, apps is, is short for application. Think of like a computer. Computers have programs, phones have applications or apps for short. When you go into one of these apps, let's say we went to the camera, which is right here. If I wanted to go back to the home screen, all I need to do is tap on the home button right at the bottom here, and that'll take me back to this home screen. So no matter what you're doing, if you tap on this button, it always takes you back to the home screen. Think of it as, hey, I hit the wrong button. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that. No problem, I'm gonna go back to home and start over again. So this always takes you back to this screen. Now the button on the right is, is called the recent apps button. And the recent apps buttons basically always shows you what applications are running on the phone. So as an example, we were in the camera application and then we hit the home button and we went back to the home screen. Now an important thing to note is that just because we went back to the home screen, it doesn't mean the camera application is now closed. It's still running in the background of the phone. So by tapping recent applications, that button, this shows me, oh, the camera is still open and I can tap here to get back to the camera if I wanted to. Now, if you'd like to close out all of those applications from running in the background, simply tap on, tap on recent applications, that button, and just swipe up. This will allow you to close out all the applications that are running in the background of the phone. Helps the phone run a lot faster as well. So that's recent apps. Next we have what's called the back button. And the back button just helps us to maneuver easier through different applications. So as an example, if I were to go back to settings by swiping down from the top, swiping again, tapping the settings button. Let's say I were to go to display, and now I wanna go back to the last page in the menu, I'm gonna tap my back button right here, and that's gonna take me back one step. That's all it does, it just takes you back one step. And if you continue to hit it, after you've gone as far as you can, tapping it again, takes you back to the home screen. So it's just uh, an easy button to help you navigate through the different menus by taking you back one step every time you tap it. So those are the main buttons you're gonna use to navigate the phone. Next, we're gonna move on to the section called the notification panel. And we're gonna get there by taking our finger, going to the top of the screen and just swiping down. Now this is going to show you all of the notifications that have come through your phone. What's an example of a notification? Well, an email. Here it shows I got two emails. So if I wanted to go to those emails, I can simply just tap in this section and it will take me right to the email application. I also have a weather notification that shows me this is the weather for tomorrow. So cool. And this section will also show you if someone were, to send, someone were to send you a text message or if there were uh, like a Facebook message or Instagram or any other applications you have on the phone, they communicate with you through this section of the phone. And when you're finished reading them, guess what? I can just swipe it away just like that. Oh, I see I have some emails. I'll read those later. I may not swipe those away. This one, okay, I'll swipe that one. Oh. Now you can't swipe them all away, some of them won't let you, but either way, this is where all your messages are gonna come through. Now, at the top of the screen here, we have what is called, or what are called the notification switches. Now these switches control different settings on your phone. So for example, if you want to connect to your home Wi-Fi network, or you want it to go to a public restaurant such as a Starbucks, you can tap on this little icon to connect to their Wi-Fi and use their internet for free. So I'm just gonna tap the icon, and once it's lit up in blue, that tells you 
that the Wi-Fi is on and it's looking for a signal. Now, if you'd like to connect to a specific network, take your finger and just put it on the button and just keep it there for one second. That's gonna take you right to the settings menu and it's gonna start checking for different Wi-Fi networks. So in this case, let's say you're at you know a Starbucks and Starbucks shows up here in the menu, you would tap on, I mean, this one says Spectrum, but let's say it's at Starbucks. You would just tap on it and then tap in the password box here and then you would enter the password and then hit connect. And that would allow you to connect to a public Wi-Fi network. It's just that easy. I'm going to use my back button here to back out of this. See that? And that's going to take me all the way out of that menu. So that's how you connect to a Wi-Fi network. And again, I'm just swiping down from the top of the screen. Now, one important thing to note is you can swipe a second time and it'll show you more options. So just to show you that one more time, swipe one time to see the first six switches, swipe again to see more, and I can swipe to the left to get even more shortcuts um, to different settings options. You have a battery saver mode here you can turn on to make your battery last longer. You have a night light function. Screencast will let you send your phone screen to your TV if you have a Chromecast. One important thing I want to show you is the flashlight. Now with the flashlight, I can just tap this button here and it'll use the camera flash as a flashlight to help you navigate or look closer at something, you know, with your phone light. So these are different, uh, again, just shortcuts to different settings. You also have your Bluetooth option if you have a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphones. Um, same thing, you just take your finger, hold down on that button, and it's gonna take you right to the Bluetooth menu where you can then connect to a Bluetooth device to pair it. You'd have to tap pair new device, and then make sure your new device is also connected or is in the pairing mode and once it's in pairing mode, you can connect and then you could send the sound to it. Okay. So that is the notification section. You also have a shortcut to your hotspot in the event you want to use your phone as a hotspot for your tablet or computer. And you have uh, a lot of options here. So go through here to just see all the different things you have available. Um, notice one more thing here. When I swipe down one time, I just have these six options. When I swipe again, I have a brightness bar at the top of the screen here. This will help you to raise or lower the brightness of your screen. So if your screen is too bright, you can turn it down and vice versa. If it's too low, you can turn it up just by using the little slider at the top of the screen, just like that. Okay, so that was the notification panel. Now, the next thing we're gonna go over is applications. So I talked about it briefly earlier, computers have programs, phones have applications, and people will say apps for short, um, meaning applications. So first of all, if you wanna see a list of all the applications on your phone, you're going to swipe up, and this section will show you all the different applications that are on the phone. And here you'll have a couple of folders here. So there's a Google folder with Google applications. There's a Metro folder. If you have the Metro version of the phone, there's a Motorola folder that has different Motorola apps. Um, so keep in mind, you might find certain applications will be in folders. Now, if you'd like to download a new application, maybe you want to get Uber or a slot machine app or Sudoku or just a, a new application, you're gonna to go to this icon, which is called the Play Store. The Play Store has anything and everything you can think of that you'd want to download to your phone. It's all in that one place. It's a one-stop shop for applications, games, books, and movies. Tap on Play Store. Now, this could look different for different people. So let me stop and just explain. If you have not signed into a Google account yet, 
then you probably don't see this screen. You probably see a prompt that's asking you to sign into your Gmail or your Google account. If you see that prompt, you will need to sign into your Gmail and put in your password first before you're able to access the Play Store. You have to have a Google or Gmail account because that's how it stores all of your app information. It's all through your email address. So fill that information out. If you don't have one, at the bottom of the screen, you should see a button that says create account. You'll need to click on that button and you'll need to follow the, follow the steps to create a Google account, which it should only take two or three minutes, create the account, and then afterward, it'll allow you to get to the Play Store to download applications. Okay, let's move on. So if you wanna download an application, it's, it's fairly easy. There's two ways to do it. Um, you can um, go to games or apps, and these are just different sections that are gonna showcase different things. So you have games, apps, offers, movies, books, these different options here. If there is a specific uh, application you want to download, let's say it is Solitaire, I can tap in this little box at the top of the screen. This box says search for all apps and games. Just tap in here. I can either type in Solitaire, or as you start typing, it'll begin to recommend, or this is my favorite, I just use the microphone and just tap it and just say the name of the application and it'll automatically search it for me. So let's try it. Uber. So it'll take what you've said, it'll search for the app, and I can just tap this green button here and it will begin installing Uber on the phone. Now one important thing to note, if that green button does not say install, if instead the green button has a price in it, that means that the application you have searched is not free. It means there is a charge. So keep in mind um, or be aware of that so you don't end up purchasing something that you didn't mean to purchase. Most applications are free, but there are applications that, that do cost. So again, if you see a price, make sure you are okay paying it before you tap the green button. So. Once you hit install and it begins downloading, you just need to go home. So we're gonna hit our home button to go back to our home screen. And then we're going to swipe up. And this will take us to what is called our app drawer. And once Uber finishes downloading, it's gonna show up right here. And there it is. This is our Uber application. And I can just tap on there to then go into Uber and then begin setting up my account. So that is the process to download an application to your phone. It's fairly easy. You just need to search, type in the name, or you can either type in the name or say it and hit the green button and that will download it to your phone. Okay, so now that we've gone over applications, next I wanna go over making calls, text messages, um, those basic forms of communication. So. On the home screen, you will see a phone icon. We'll tap on there. And this is where you'll need to go if you want to make a phone call, okay? So we're here. We're gonna then tap on the icon in the bottom right, this blue icon. This takes you to the uh, dialer or the keypad, and it will allow you to then type in a phone number. So, I can search, I can type in a number now. And I can tap the green button to initiate this call. So let's try it now, green button. And now our phone is ringing and it's making the call right now. If you wanna put the phone on speaker, you'll just tap the little speaker right here. Are you prepared for a and there's that call. If you want to end the call, hit the red button, and that's how we end the call, just like that. Now, the next thing, let's go over how do you answer the phone if someone is calling you. So, I'm going to initiate a call to the phone so you can see what it looks like, and I'm going to show you how to answer or how to decline the call. 
Okay, so here we go. A call is coming through. I can either tap the green button to answer or the red to decline it. I can also tap on it to see it bigger and I can then swipe up to answer or swipe down to decline it. So if you notice, I know I did that quickly, but there were two things you saw there. So the call comes in in a small pop-up at the top of the screen first, and you'll either need to tap the green button to answer or the red button to decline it. And if you were to tap on the call, then you have the option to drag the little circle up to answer it or drag it down to decline the call. So I wanted to go over both scenarios so you guys know exactly what you're gonna see and you are prepared to answer or decline calls. Okay, the next thing I wanna go over is how to check your voicemails on the phone. So if someone were to call and you miss the call and they leave you a voicemail, it will show up as a pop-up in your notification panel. So if I just swipe down from the top of the screen, um, at the very bottom of the list here, it'll say voicemail. Now there's a chance you may have a lot of pop-ups in here, so you might need to scroll up till you get to the very last option. And when you see the one that says voicemail, just tap on voicemail. And here it will allow you to call your voicemail to then check your messages. So that's how you check your voicemails. Next, we're going to move on and talk about how to send and receive a message. So for this, you will need to go to the messaging app and you should have it on the bottom of your screen here. If not, when you swipe up, you'll find it right here, the blue icon. Tap on messages and really easy, it says here, start chat. So tap on start chat and you'll just need to type in the phone number of the person you would like to send a message to. Now, if you come to the upper right and you see this little keypad, tapping on here will allow you to then search a phone number. Um, so I can just start typing the number in. So I typed in a phone number and at the top here, you'll see a contact is gonna pop up and I can just tap on that contact or I can just hit the little check at the bottom here and then that will populate that phone number. And so I searched a number that is already saved in my phone. So then it's showing me the name of the person. Next, I'm gonna tap in the send message box and I can send my message, hi. How are you? And then you're gonna hit the blue button here to send the message. And that's it. That's how you send a message. Now, if you wanted to send a picture or a video, you can tap on the little paper clip to the left right here. And you would tap on, so right here it's gonna say camera, or it's gonna have a camera icon. Right next to it is a, uh, an icon for the gallery. So we just tap on that, and now I can scroll through and find a picture in my phone. I'm gonna tap this picture, and then I'm gonna hit the little send button here, and now it's gonna send a picture as well. So that's how you send a picture or a video in a text message. Let's hit our home button to go back to the home screen. Next, we're gonna talk about how to take pictures. So we have our camera icon in the bottom right corner right here. So tap on the camera. And the camera is pretty straightforward. You have a photo button right here. This is showing you you're on the photo setting. And if I wanna take a picture, I just tap a little white button here, take a picture really easy. If I want to take a video, I'm going to tap the video button. And now my button is changed. It has a little red dot in the center. So if I tap the red dot, 
it will begin recording a video and I can just move around. My video is going, I can see my countdown or count up right here. And when you're finished, just tap the red button to stop the recording and that's it. If you wanna see the video after, to the right of this little icon is your gallery. So tap there. And here I can play back my video and see how it looks just by tapping on the video. There we go. I'm gonna tap my home button here to go back to the home screen. Now, if I wanna later go back and see the pictures or video that I've taken, I'm going to um, swipe up and go to the Google folder right here and then go to photos. It's in the bottom right corner. And then now I can see all the pictures that I just took, all the, also some I took earlier right here. This is the video we just took, the picture we just took and some photos I took earlier. You can tap on them and swipe through to see them bigger. And then when we're all done, just hit our home button to go back to the home screen. So that's how the camera works. That's how you take pictures, video, and then how you go back and look at them later. The very last thing I wanna go over is email. How do you sign into your email account to check your emails? Now there was a step previous, there was a step earlier in the video where we talked about signing into your Google account. Now some of you may have multiple email accounts, not just a Google, and so I wanna show you how to sign into those other email accounts. So it, on the main screen, you'll have a Google folder. Tap on that folder and go to Gmail. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, I have a Yahoo, I don't have a Gmail. Well, guess what? In the Gmail app, you can sign into almost any email account. They have prompts to allow you to get into other email accounts. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So I'm gonna hit got it. It's gonna show me, this is one of my email accounts, but I wanna add another email. So I'm just gonna hit the plus to add another email. And here I have my different options. So I can sign into another Google, I can sign into an Outlook, Hotmail, Live, Yahoo, and Exchange. These are all the options that are available in the Gmail app. Now, if you're like me and you have an AOL email address or an SBC Global, those are a little trickier to sign in with the Gmail app. So I'm gonna show you one other way to sign into those email accounts on your phone. Let's go home. We're then gonna tap the Play Store and we're gonna to go to the top of the screen in fact, just hit our little arrow at the top here. So tap in the search box and you're gonna type in the end of your email address. So in this case, I'm gonna type in um, at, and to, hit, to find the at, I just hit the numbers button in the bottom left corner. That's gonna show me my symbols. I'm gonna tap at and then type in aol.com. And then I'm gonna hit the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner to search. And it's gonna bring up the AOL app. So there's an app for AOL. I can just simply install the AOL app and then I can sign into my AOL email. Now, if you have an SBC Global, no problem. I'm hitting the little arrow here to erase. And now I'm gonna type in at SBC Global net and hit the search and now it's showing me a list of applications that support sbcglobal.net email accounts so you can go to you know yahoo uh, my at t or i also like this generic email app here it just says email and this one actually works really well too so you would tap the green button to install the application. And then once it's installed, we would go home, swipe up. And so if you notice our page of applications is full, so I would need to swipe over 
once that application downloads, you'll be able to swipe, oh, actually not, excuse me, not swipe over, just swipe up and you'll be able to see that application. So watch this, I'm gonna swipe up. Oh, it actually put it right here. So there it is, my mistake. So there's the email right here. And then I can sign in to my sbcglobal.net after I accept the prompts here. Okay, let's go home. All right, guys, this was our video on how to use the Moto G Pier for beginners. I hope it was helpful. Make sure you guys like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care, and as always, have a good one.